Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. My name is Charlotte, this is the Milk and Honey Life channel, and we talk about beauty, planning, productivity, organization, all sorts of good stuff. And you all have been requesting a what's on my phone video, and I think that's so much fun. I love being kind of nosy about what's on people's phones. I think you guys will probably enjoy seeing mine because it's a little bit much. And I'm going to share with you guys a relic, a true antique, a piece of history, if you will. <laughs> It's the iPhone 6 Plus, and I know that's extremely out of date as of 2019. There's just nothing physically wrong with this phone, so I still have the 6 Plus, and I think I'm finally due to upgrade in a couple months, so I will finally join the rest of you in the future. But for now, I got this little baby, and she still does good. The only thing is it has to be charged all the time. Like, it literally might as well be a landline. I'm currently... I'm constantly plugged in. Nate knows I'm about to film this, so... He was texting me. Decide to film a phone video and your phone will start blowing up. I keep getting texts. But anyway, this is my phone. So it has a mini mouse case on it. It's super cute. It's from Amazon. I don't think you can get it anymore, but this is it. And it's really cute because it has... I don't know why the camera just turned on. It's really cute because it has a little mini mouse like overlay on the front of the phone. It has this on the back. And then I added this little palm tree pop socket. So on the lock screen, I currently have... A picture from my newest favorite movie, which I already talked to you guys about, which is The Greatest Showman. Again, I'm late on that too, but I really loved that movie. I just discovered it and I thought it was so charming and sweet and the music's so good. So that's why it is my phone wallpaper. It's also my sound effects right now, like some songs from the movie. All right, so we are live with the screen recording so you guys can see what I'm seeing here on my phone. So I have a few, um, dare I say, OCD things that I do with my phone. I just feel like phones can get really cluttered and it's something that we're spending like how many hours a day looking at? Like have you seen your screen reports like four or five, six hours a day on our phones? I think it's important to be decluttered with your phone just the way it is to be decluttered in like your home life and everything else. So I have a few little rules that I follow that keep my phone looking really nice, I think. So the first thing is I never put any apps in those bottom two rows. I think it just looks really hectic when you have an app on every square inch of your phone space. So I like to leave those two rows empty and same thing on the second page. So I only have these two pages. I don't let myself go past that because I just think it can get out of hand. So the first page is individual apps that I use like every single day. The second page is groups of apps. And so the other crazy thing you'll notice is each group has exactly nine apps in it. It doesn't go on to a second page and it doesn't have less than that because I think it just looks really messy when you have some like half full or half empty groups like cluttering up the page. So yeah, that's a little bit nuts, but you have to admit it looks nice. I used to actually organize them by color and that was extremely much. So I've reined it in from that at least. You'll see the structure of everything in a second, but that is why I keep it kind of decluttered so that it looks really nice. And in that very bottom row, I have my four most used things, which is my phone, the messaging, Gmail. I use that for email instead of the built-in Apple one. I think it's a lot better if you have a Gmail account. And Safari, which I use obviously for the internet. And another sort of anal thing that I do with the internet is I don't keep tabs open. Like once I'm done looking at something, I close it out. I just feel like it's like cleaning up after yourself. The same way you like wash a dish after you're done eating, you like close out the tab when you're done browsing. Unless I leave it open because I want to remember to look at that article or something later, like it's on purpose. And you can also see the only bookmark I have here is the Disneyland crowd forecast because sometimes you just want to know if it's packed at Disney or not. So that's useful. But see, yeah, I'm going to close that app and close that. So that's the other thing. I also close out my apps when I'm done using them. I only keep three apps open all the time and I'll show you what they are. So this first page is basically structured for productivity. Like I try not to put a lot of just like mindless fun stuff on the front because we tend to open our phones the same way we like open the fridge, like not even hungry, but you're just staring at it. Like, what should I eat? So we just open our phone like, what should I do? And I try to suggest to myself like positive productive things instead of just having a bunch of like mindless social media or fun games or anything. So the things on this first page are very purposefully chosen that if I open any one of these, I don't feel like it'll be a huge waste of time. So the first row is like my most must have apps. I cannot live without my notes app. <laughs> Do you see? <laughs> my dogs are hanging out. 
Um, it is my most used app for sure. If I could only pick one, I would keep this super simple, basic thing. And it's my notes. I have it all organized into different groups of all sorts of things that things I use in my daily life, things to do with the guides that I'm writing for you guys, things for my writing clients, things for beauty, fitness, everything. So I obviously won't be going into all of that, but I can in future videos, like this really is a big part of how I plan. And I don't show it that much because it's hard to get into in a visual video. The next app here on the front screen is called Habit Share, and that's another one I keep open all the time. And this is something I do just to keep track of daily habits. And I really like the structure of it where you can see the last seven days. Because the reason I use this is to kind of give myself a red flag if I'm dropping the ball on anything. I'll start to notice a few gray circles, which means I've been missing that particular thing. And I'm like, oh shoot, like the house is kind of falling apart because I haven't tidied up or done the dishes lately. Or like my health might not be doing that great because I haven't been taking my supplements or getting my exercise or whatever it is. So this isn't like something that I'm religious that I have to do every single day, but these are things that I just keep an eye on. I'm like, as long as I'm doing these things, my life is somewhat in order. <laughs> That's what I like this app for. And every time you check something off, you can say green, I did it. Red, I purposefully skipped it. Or no, red, I failed at it. Gray, I purposefully skipped it. Or just empty. So if that's done, you can check it off. So I keep that open all day so that I can be reminded to check it off as I go. Then the next app I keep open all day is Spotify. I live and breathe music. I love it. It's like, it is like oxygen for me. If I forget to listen to music, I feel off. So I keep Spotify open all day. I love it. That was Nate that was listening to Inya, by the way, not me. <laughs> he loves Inya, it's so cute. This Trabajo Relax app um, playlist I found is pretty good. There's more Inya. Anyway, so wow. Oh, the Spider-Man soundtrack was pretty good. I'm obsessed with The Greatest Showman, we know that. Beirut, I like him a lot. Oh, this 1940s music playlist is fun, like if you like the 40s and 50s and stuff. Anyway, so I always have these three apps open all day because they help me be more productive and more happy. And then the next one in that row is the activity app. So this is pretty important to me. This is linked to my Apple Watch and it tracks how often I'm standing up, how often I'm exercising and things like that. And the goal is to close those little circles every single day. So you can see in January, I've been doing really well getting my exercise in, getting my steps in, just taking care of myself. That's really what it tracks. Like compared to December when I was doing Vlogmas and just generally not taking care of myself very well, you can see like, whoa, big difference. I was never closing my circles, like it's horrible. But in January, I've really made an effort. I've closed the circles every single day so far. And that just means that I'm, you know, being active and taking care of myself and not sitting down for too long and stuff like that. So I love that. I don't keep it open all day though because I more so monitor it on my Apple Watch. Okay, so then the next row is more like productivity stuff. Google Calendar, that's how I track my calendar on my phone. Highly recommend it because Nate and I can sync both of our calendars together. Reminders I use for shopping lists and this is so great. It's like everything from Target to the grocery store to Trader Joe's to Daiso, the Japanese dollar store. Like everywhere that I ever shop has its own list. So whenever I'm randomly thinking, oh, next time I'm at Ikea, I wanna get some new plates. I just put it on that list. And then if it's not urgent, doesn't matter. When I finally get to Ikea, I know exactly what I wanted there. Moving on in that row, the next thing I have is my photos app. And honestly, I try not to even look at it because it stresses me out the way Apple structures the photos app where all of your photos are just in one big mess. And even if you add them into like little folders and albums, you still see that big stream of just chronological photos. And I just don't like looking at it that way because it's messy and I think we're getting the picture that I really don't like digital clutter any more than I like real clutter. So that next app next to it is key for me and I am so excited to show you guys this one. It's called Slidebox and it helps you organize your photos. So let me get past all these screen recordings that I'm currently doing. Um, okay, like here's a picture I took with <laughs> holding Nate's hand and then the dog was like laying on us last night. So I'm going to file that. You see I have these little albums in the bottom here. I'm going to file that into family. And then the next one is DC's little head poking out from under the bed. It was so cute. So that's going to go next into the doggies album. There's Lolita sleeping. She's so cute. There's me cuddling with the dogs. So you see I'm just like easily, let me show you one more thing actually. I just hit undo in the top left which brought it back. Um, another thing you can do if you decide you don't want to keep a photo is just swipe it up and that like throws it into the little trash can at the top. So I'm gonna undo that because I do want to keep that photo, but that is really, really fast for sorting your photos. So you just like swipe them up into the trash. 
you swipe them down into different albums and you can keep everything really organized that way and I like it so much more. So that's how I always handle my photos. I only go into the actual photo app if I need to like set something as my wallpaper or do something specifically with like the Apple app. But that's it. Okay, next row I have Instagram, which is the one social media I let on my main page here because I just have a weakness for Instagram. I love it. I love talking to you guys there. It's the easiest way for me to keep in touch with you all throughout the week. And so that's what it is. The next one is the Disneyland app. I honestly just like to look at this for a little pick me up sometimes. Even though I'm not at Disneyland, it makes me feel like I'm at Disneyland if I'm at work or something. And I just feel like seeing how long is the wait line for Thunder Mountain right now, my favorite ride or whatever it might be. Um, Ooh, look at that. That's a five, 10 minute waits right now. Hmm. Anyway, so that's kind of fun. Random suggestion for you guys if you want something to kind of play with like that. The next app is Calm, and I also really wanted to make a point to show you guys this one because it's so key. Did the screen recording just stop? No, it didn't. Okay. Um, I use this app every morning, every night, so often, and I just want to quickly kind of show you some of the highlights of it. It's not cheap. Most of these meditation type apps aren't. Like I used to have a Headspace subscription and I traded it out for this because I was paying the same for Headspace that I was paying for like Spotify. So it's like, you can have every song ever written or you can have a few hundred meditations by the same dude, you know? So this Calm app, I feel like I get a lot more value out of. For one thing, there's a different daily meditation every single day. You can see the one right now listed there. For another thing, you can change the background to however you want, like how cool this one is. It's like a crackling fireplace. And then you hear the white noise of the crackling behind everything you do, which is very soothing. There's this one I like. I mean, I usually go for the ocean because it's my happy place. Um, so it just has a lot of really cool things. And the next thing I really like is the sleep tab, which I've talked about before, um, which are basically bedtime stories. And a lot of them are read by celebrities and they're just so soothing. And I feel like a kid again, getting tucked in and it makes me happy. I love listening to these when I go to bed. Then there's the meditation tab. There's a ton of different guided meditations, different lengths of time. If you only have a few minutes or whatever, it's so great. Then beyond all of that, there's also a music tab. So you can get like background noise, like heavy rain or ocean waves, like any of these. You can get nature melodies, which are kind of like songs mixed with little background noises. And it's just very, very relaxing. There's songs specifically to put you to sleep. These things are so soothing. I just, I love this app. It keeps track of um, if you have a running streak of using it, all sorts of good stuff. I just really recommend it. So favorite meditation app. All right, then I have Kindle. I have this here because again, when you pick up your phone mindlessly, like you're waiting in line or something, I want to think to do something useful and reading is one of the most useful things you can do with your time. So instead of scrolling through social media, I scroll through a book and I have a lot of different books on Kindle. I have a Kindle, but to be honest, I read more on the Kindle app on my iPhone than on my Kindle. It's so easy. It's a free app. You can buy digital books and put them right on there and it's perfect. Then the next row is just kind of useful stuff. Again, Wemo is how I control certain outlets in our house. I've talked about this before. It's like a little smart outlet plug that you can put in and Amazon Alexa can hit control it or you can control it on your phone. Like right now, I just turned out the bedroom light, which should have been off. And it's really convenient like that. If you're traveling, you control your lights from afar and everything. Then there's a the big day app, which I use for countdowns. For instance, it's 28 days until my birthday. And I don't want to show the other ones I have in here because it's like travel and I don't like to say exactly where I'm going to be when, but it is so useful. I think we should all have things that we're looking forward to every single day. It gives you a reason to get up. Sometimes, you know how you just wake up and you lay in your phone, like checking your phone in bed. I check that and it's like, oh yeah, I have so-and-so number of days until this big event and it makes me happy. Okay, then I have maps for obvious reasons and settings for obvious reasons. So that's the whole first page. That's everything I use hardcore on a daily basis. <laughs> Can't live without. All right, so on to the second page of apps. Uh, obviously, we don't have time to get into every single one of these, so I'll just quickly show you what they are. The, I have them labeled with emoji because I think it's just simpler and cleaner than having a whole word there. So like this first one is basically tools and that's why it has that emoji. And I have the Find Your iPhone app. I have Amazon Alexa, which I mostly use for my shopping list. Like I'll tell her to add something to my shopping list and then when I'm at the store, I'll check it. I have Square Trade, which is how I have this phone insured and I really recommend it. They have saved me a few times. I have this handy level, which is nice because if you're hanging something, you can, 
I do not want notifications. That's another thing about my phone is I don't allow notifications on hardly anything. I find it very distracting. But so here is this level which comes in handy if you're hanging something. And what else? Then I've got my contacts, my calculator, my Apple Watch. TV remote is nice if you have an Apple TV, you can control it with your phone so much easier. Like if you're typing in a show name, you can like type it on a keyboard. And then the measurement app. And so that's all for tools. The next one is time management. So I have a little hourglass. Sleep cycle is a cool alarm clock that kind of senses when the best time to wake you up is. You keep it in bed with you though, which is sort of weird, but it's nice. It wakes you up gently. The next one, step out, is an alarm clock that makes you like do something to show, to shut off the alarm. Like you can program it, like I have to take a picture of my coffee pot before the alarm will stop going off. So if you have a hard time waking up, that's key. Okay, I wanna show you this one so real quick. It's called Eggsy and it helps you focus. So you set a timer for a certain amount of minutes so you don't wanna be on your phone. And then you have to put your phone face down like this to get the credit for it and it counts down. And if you touch your phone, it cancels it. But if you don't touch your phone, you get a little baby. That guy just got a little chicken earlier. Isn't that cute? <laughs> You can hatch different animals um, and like build your little farm. And it just makes a game out of being focused and not playing on your phone, so I like that. Then I have hours tracker. I use that for, you know, I'm freelance. Um, so when I'm working for different clients and billing them on an hourly basis, that makes it really easy. I can track a ton of different clients, a ton of different jobs, and it will log the hours for me based on project. So that one's good. Then there's this focus timer, which is another thing that kind of just helps you focus. It has 25 minute increments. Then I have a time tracking app called A Tracker, and it's okay, I don't use it very much. Alarmed is another good app for setting specific alarms or like recurring reminders on your phone or whatever you might want. Forest is the same as that little animal one, so when you focus, you grow a little tree or a little plant, and you can build a little forest, so that's kind of cute. Um, and then the last one is the clock, so that's my time management. Then I have tools like related to work, so I guess you could call it work apps. I have Evernote, which I don't use as much because that Apple built-in uh, notes app is so good. I love it. Simple and you can organize it, so that's all I need. Then I have the Sheets app, which lets me do spreadsheets on my phone. I have Google Drive. I have Google Documents. I have Files. I have the built-in mail app that I don't really use because I use the Gmail app. I have Remember the Milk, which is another to-do list tracker. And that one's nice because you can schedule like on the first of each month, rent is due or like recurring things like that. But again, I don't use it as much. Like I'd honestly rather just jot it down on my notes app than hardly anything else. Like we don't need to overcomplicate it too much. Then I have Dropbox and this one is cool. Turbo scan, it lets you scan documents using the phone camera. Then I have a weather and safety group. So I have emergency alerts from Red Cross. I have Google Earth. I have Shake Alert, which if you're in LA, supposedly it can warn you if there's an earthquake coming right before it comes. I don't know. Thank goodness I haven't had to use that yet, but it's good to have. And then Life360 is really cool for keeping track of people who you share your location with. And it even tells you like what their phone battery is. So it's a good safety app to have. Like I like knowing that people know where I am. Um, and then the same thing with Find Friends, which is the Apple you know version of that. But Life360 is way more robust. So I recommend that one. Compass that's built in, the weather app. I also like the weather channel app. And then this one's really simple. It's just a thermometer. But I like it because it tells you what the temperature is and what it feels like. Because sometimes in LA, it'll say it's like 60 degrees and then it feels really cold, like 50. So I always like to check the real temperature. The next row, I have transportation and travel. So this is stuff, you know, just for driving and mostly for booking hotels and things. Um, let's see, Gas Buddy is cool because it tells you all the cheapest gas near you. Whoops. Um, I have my insurance, I have Google Maps and Waze, which are just more ways to get around the traffic of LA. Hopper is cool for getting last minute flights. Hotels.com is good. Hotel Tonight is also cheap, last minute hotels. Uber for obvious reasons. And then Bird is the thing that's like the scooters you can drive around LA. Okay, the next app is like finance related. So banking and saving money and all that good stuff. I have Google Pay and Venmo and PayPal, which are ways to like pay people and get paid. I have California Lottery because I bought a ticket like one time. Um, every dollar is really cool. That's Dave Ramsey's app and it helps you really budget every single dollar so that your money goes where you want it to go. The Mint app is cool. It lets you get a bird's eye view of all your different accounts and loans and you know all that stuff. Wells Fargo is who I bank with. The Secret Money app is really cool. It's from the people who wrote The Secret and it just kind of helps you play with money, like feel better about money. 
money stuff tends to be so stressful and tense and it's like that's not manifesting anything good so we need to kind of lighten up around money this app i think is really fun you can like fake purchase things it gives you fake money to like dream what you would buy with it i really like that app it's so much fun and then wallet is just an apple thing then the next one is shopping that's why i have the money flying away icon <laughs> and so these are the shops that i tend to use the most on my phone i love having an app for them and i don't have to go to the website so ebay amazon bath and body works target is my jam for sure and you can put a shopping list in the target app which is nice i don't for time's sake i don't want to open all these though okay then etsy we all know and love etsy the app store i keep it in here because i feel like i'm shopping for apps <laughs> dry bar sephora you know i gotta have sephora and like to know it so if you want to see what people are wearing like on instagram or wherever so those are great then i have games so these are the games that i like to play i don't play a ton of phone games but heads up is fun if you're like waiting in line at disney or somewhere with people it's ellen DeGeneres' phone game we heard it isn't a game but it's just cute pictures so i look at that when i'm bored sometimes Words with friends, Nate and I always have a Scrabble game going, always, it's so much fun. Solitaire, I'm like so simple, right? I just enjoy playing Solitaire. Panda Pops, classic. Um, Play Disney is a, like an app you can use in the Disney parks and it's interactive, like if you're in line, it'll entertain you with like Disney trivia and stuff that you can do in the line. Word Crossy is fun, it's like making words out of word jumbles. Emo Disney Emoji Blitz is really cute and fun. I love that one. And it gives you emojis that you can text with. And then the last thing I have is just a crosswords app because I like to do crossword puzzles. I like word games, as you can tell. I'm a writer, so it makes sense. Then the next row is like entertainment. So the first group is music. I listen to Pandora. Not that much. I usually listen to Spotify, but I have it in here. Shazam is cool and Soundhound for if you hear a song you like and you want to identify it, it will do that. Smule, I don't even know how to say that, but it's fun. It's like a karaoke app, so me and I were having fun with that. Um, I don't listen to podcasts a ton, but I do like to have the option. Um, a couple of podcasts I like are the Skinny Confidential and the Sean West podcast. Then there's the iTunes Store. This one is supposed to be Singing Lessons, Benito. I haven't even tried it yet. And my voice memos. Then I have books. Mostly, I, like I said, I use Kindle. But these are some other, this is like books and learning. So I love to listen to audiobooks. I have Audible, I have the Apple Books app. Rosetta Stone and Duolingo are for learning languages. I really like those. And then I've got the dictionary, of course. Um, course Era and Khan Academy are for sitting in on like college courses, basically. You guys know I miss school, so I love that. Blinkist, I haven't tried much yet. I'm, as a writer, I don't know how I feel about it because I think it's the whole point is like, spark notes for adults and it like uh, boils down the essential points of a book so you don't have to read the whole book basically and then goodreads i just got on there so that's for tracking like what you like to read and getting recommendations and keeping a list of what you want to read then i've got my movies group so direct tv prime video netflix those are like always i could watch movies this ip cam viewer is how i watch the dogs when they're at doggy daycare um, and then there's Fandango for getting tickets, StubHub for um, tickets to shows, YouTube, AMC. We have the AMC theaters pass, so we can see three movies a week included, and it's so great. It's like $20 a month. I love it. Then I have camera stuff. So Layout lets you make like diptychs and um, collages of your photos. Kira Kira, I think we all know, it adds beautiful little sparkles to your pictures. Facetune is good just for like, it's almost like Photoshop for your phone. Like the other day I edited out like um, an AC vent on the wall with Facetune. Snapseed has some cool editing features. Same with VSCO, plain old camera app. I like Fonto because you can add fonts to your photos. I know this is so long though. I don't think I can demonstrate everything. Preview is cool. It lets you plan your Instagram feed. And it also has some cool apps built in. So that's just my Instagram feed. And then spark post is cool for doing like typography and like creating fun posts that way. Okay, bottom row. This one has got the prayer hands and this is like meditation, goals, productivity, stuff that goes with my miracle morning. So I have two journaling apps, those first ones. I have Headspace, which I don't use that much for meditation now that I have the Calm app. Sleep easily, okay, let me show you guys this. It's the most ridiculous app, but this puts me to sleep every time. It has a few different sleep type meditations and oh my gosh, it is, the lady's voice is like, so relaxing, I love that app. Um, the next one, I don't know how to say that, Romenti, is just kind of supposed to help you direct your life, pick your goals and priorities and stuff. Quit that is cool if you wanna quit something, it keeps track of it, like for instance, 
3,167 days ago, I quit smoking. Yay. And I saved $24,000 since then, which is insane. I probably saved a lot more than that with California prices too. So crazy. Um, or like Nate and I are doing dry January. We kind of screwed up and didn't start until the 16th. But it's cool because I can track that and it just gives you an idea of like if you're saving money by not doing things that you want to stop doing. And then I have Strides which tracks like streaks and like goals and then two, a meditation app. That one's just a timer. If you don't want to have guided meditation, it'll just let you sit in silence then it will go gong at the end. And the last one is the secret app which just gives you like a daily little passage from the book, The Secret. So I like that too. So then there's a food related group. I have restaurant reservations, I have Yelp for finding places. Daily fast and zero are good if you do intermittent fasting. I'm not really doing that right now, but if you are, that helps time out when your little eating window is and when it closes, and that's good. Um, Grubhub for ordering food, Lose It for tracking calories and nutrition, Starbucks for obvious reasons, and then this one's cool, it's gluten-free Disney dining. So if you go to Disney and you don't wanna eat gluten, that's super helpful. Then this is a fitness one. Just the basic Apple Health. I have a few different running apps in here. Um, 5K Runner helps coach you to get to a 5K distance. 13.1 coaches you to a half marathon distance. Um, yes Fit is my little, what do you call it? Like virtual races that I run. You guys have seen the medals I've gotten. Like right now I'm working on this Beauty and the Beast one and so I'm, I have eight miles done out of 26.7 miles. So that's a cool, cool app. I love that. And there are so many medals that you can get. Wait, let me show you. You can pick, like there's this cute unicorn one. It's really fun, it really motivates you a lot. And then, what else do I have? Run tracker, just for seeing where I'm running. Heart rate helps you calculate like your target heart rate zones. Seven minute workouts on the seven app. Fitless tracks like your, I use it to track my weightlifting. Just stuff like that. The last one is social. That's why I have the girl going like, hey. <laughs> And I just have Pinterest. I don't really use Snapchat, but I have like two friends I keep up with on there. Sorry, my chair's squeaky. Tumblr, I don't really use it too much either, but I will go on there for like photo inspiration sometimes. Um, FaceTime, WhatsApp, I have literally two friends that text on WhatsApp instead of the text messaging app. You guys know who you are, so <laughs> I just use that for keeping up with them. Facebook Messenger, Facebook and Twitter. I, this Twitter app should be dusty because I truly never go on Twitter anymore. And then the last one that's cool is Nix Play. My aunt got my uncle like a digital photo frame. So if I add photos on Nix Play, they show up on his photo frame. So that's really cute. Good gift idea, good way to keep up with family. Whew, okay, I know I really tried to race through that last bit, but that is everything that's on my phone. So let me save the screen recording because if I lose it, I'm gonna be very upset. So that's everything. Please comment below. I want to know what your must-have apps are and how you organize or don't organize your phone. And don't forget to hit subscribe so you can stay posted on everything I'm doing. I post new videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I love taking your request, much like this video. So there's tons of goodness to come. And I think that's it for now. So I'll see you guys really soon. Bye!